having uh, done the nodalization, we have looked at the advancing print method by which we want to do the uh, triangulation. So, that is adding joining the nodes in order to form triangles, which will ultimately uh, form the basis for our control volumes. We have seen how we can do this using the advancing print method. There is another method which has some uh, uh, advantages and that is the Zeloni triangulation method, in which uh, uh, we are trying to create triangles which have better aspect ratio, that is which are more like equilateral triangle. This is a point which we have already touched upon last time. Uh, what we uh, do first is to uh, look at an algorithm by which we can do the triangulation according to the Zeloni triangulation method and then uh, uh, see its uh, advantages and uh, specific uh, disadvantages. What we are looking at is, uh, is a case where already the domain nodalization is done. Therefore, we have uh, for a given domain flow domain like this which is in between these boundaries, we have points which are on the boundary and which are also on the interior. <coughs> so, we do the boundary nodalization and then we draw horizontal lines here and then put many points uh, inside with some gap. Let us say that we have these many points and the idea is to join them systematically in such a way that we get uh, 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 triangular uh, tiles which will fill up this entire available volume. In the Zeloni triangulation method, in the advancing front method, we start with this boundary edges and then we look at, uh, we start with this and then see, we see which of these points lies to the left end uh, and which of them is the nearest so that we can start the triangulation like that. In the advancing front method, in, in the Zeloni triangulation, we do not specifically consider the boundaries uh, uh, like this. We only have the set of nodes which have to be joined and that includes the boundary and the interior nodes. And we start with uh, uh, a super triangle with vertices such that it is a bit difficult to do it in this, but it is vertices which are such that when you make a big triangle, all the nodes that you want to join are inside this. So, you have uh, for example, A, B, C sufficiently spread out so that you have uh, uh, a super triangle which completely envelops this. Now, the idea is that you start with a triangle, you already have a, a, a triangle here and you pick one of the nodes that has to be uh, um, joined with uh, uh, other nodes and let us say that there is a node which uh, uh, and we have in the process of triangulation, we have done some triangulation like this, so that this is not permitted. Let us say that in the process of uh, uh, triangulation, we are already through some uh, uh, things and then we are looking at what next. Okay. So, at this point, these are the nodes which and some of them may belong to the uh, super triangle also. We pick one more node which has to be triangulated and that node in this x y domain has certain x and y coordinates and based on that maybe that node falls here. So, this is a new node which has to be triangulated. So, the first thing that we do is that we have the existing nodes and existing triangles and we pick one more node which has to go into uh, uh, this and which has to be joined with other nodes to uh, form a triangle. Obviously, when you have uh, a node here, we do not want to uh, uh, join it with uh, uh, nodes which outside, which fall outside this triangle. 
because then that would mean that you will have uh, overlapping triangles and all that. So, the best way to triangulate this is to join with the with the three nodes a, a, of the triangle in which this, this one falls here. So, in that sense we would like to first of all identify for a given uh, x i y i y j of this particular node into which of the existing triangles the, the point falls. So, that is the first thing find the triangle into which the point falls and uh, uh, how can we do that? If uh, we can do by the left hand rule that is if the point is inside a triangle let us say if it is if it were to be inside the triangle then that point should lie to the left of all the edges of that particular uh, triangle or a polygon. For example, if we have we are going in the clockwise direct in the anti clockwise direction like this as we go in this direction along this edge from this point to this point this is lying to the left and as we now go along this this line here we can see that it is lying to the right. So, that means that this point is not in this triangle again if you go to this triangle here you are following uh, a clockwise direction this point is obviously lying to the right. So, this is not in this if you come here again you are following the uh, counterclockwise direction as you go along this node this is to the left as you go along this node this is to the left, but as you go along this node this is falling to the right. So, it does not fall into this this or this and one can see that when you go along this point here this is not falling to the left of this. So, it does not fall into this, but if you come to this triangle here you follow along this this is to the left of this and then to maintain the clockwise the anti clockwise direction you come here and then this is to the left of this and then you come back here and this is again to the left of it. So, by finding out that triangle uh, uh, which has edges such that to each edge the point the new node that we want to uh, uh, join up with uh, falls to the left of that particular edge we can locate the triangle in which that uh, new, new, new node fall, falls. So, we go to that triangle and that triangle has obviously three nodes and then we create three new triangles by joining these like this because the idea is to all these are nodes which have to be joined together and these are to be joined together in the form of triangles. So, that the complete area is uh, covered. So, we are saying that this bigger triangle obviously has uh, an interior node which is what this uh, uh, this node uh, which has come in and that means that you cannot have a big triangle like this because this this point this node will eventually have to be joined with other nodes and if it is joined with other nodes then uh, uh, it will lead to overlapping triangles. So, the best way to do is to accept this as a new node and accept that this old triangle that you had cannot be sustained because there are interior nodes to that and so make this into three triangles by joining like this. So, let us say that uh, we are looking at P, Q, R and this is the S. So, in the process originally you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the beginning of uh, the insertion of this node S let us call this as point S uh, uh, you had 5 triangles and now you have created 1, 2, 3 plus 3 more triangles created and which are this Q uh, R S and we also know that the original triangle P Q R cannot be used uh, to triangulate because P Q R will have an interior node ultimately when we triangulate everything here like this where one can see logic and then one can fit by the eye we can see that in each of these triangles there are no interior nodes. Okay. So, 
the fact that there are no internal nodes inside a finally triangle uh, made uh, uh, tri triangle here will mean that once we know that these uh, PSR triangle and QSR triangle all these things are possible triangles then PQR which contains this as an interior node S as an interior node is no longer tenable. So, we subtract the original triangle into which point S has fallen. So, that is we add three new triangles which are QSR okay, let us uh, let us maintain some semblance of uh, counterclockwise direction and then SRP and then PQS and we subtract out the PQR triangle. Therefore, at the end of this insertion we have 5 plus 2 that is 7 triangles. And these 7 triangles are such that now if this were the domain all the way from 1, 2, 3 like this, then this domain is triangulated into uh, so many triangles okay? and there is nothing overlapping this. But the uh, triangulation here does not stop here because one can immediately see that in the process of uh, uh, creating this we have made these triangles which are not very good triangles from the point of view of uh, uh, aspect ratio one side is too small the other sides are uh, very large. Now, is there a possible cure? So, there is a possible cure and the possibility that we are looking at is that we cannot shift this uh, node here because there are many nodes and at this stage we do not know if there is going to be some other uh, 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 point which is coming here for example, which will make the whole aspect ratio. So, at this stage we do not know what other nodes will be coming into this domain and we have to make adjustments with the current state of knowledge. We have to come up with the best possible way of triangulating this current domain that we are considering. So, our domain consists as of now as uh, going from here up to this these things with these identified nodes. Now, if you want to do this then uh, what we uh, say is that I do not have freedom to move this or uh, move these things, these positions are fixed. For this fixed position is this the best triangulation or is it possible to have uh, uh, a better triangulation with better aspect ratio. So, for that I take the uh, freedom to consider uh, a different triangulation, I am I'm not happy with this particular triangulation here. So, I consider points Q R S Q and let us say this is T. So, I have a rectangle a quadrilateral uh, Q T R S and this can be triangulated into like what it is Q R S and Q T R. It can also be triangulated into this way. So, that is I can have Q T S and T R S So, the with the existing domain and with the existing nodes if I consider just these four points here I have two possible ways of triangulating this quadrilateral either into uh, Q R S and Q T S. Uh, Q R uh, Q T R or T R S. So, that is this one and then uh, T S Q or Q T S like this. Which of these two is better? One can visually see that uh, a triangulation like this is better than triangulation of, this, uh, of uh, this. So, the original triangulation that we had for uh, this set of four points is not good and we would like to uh, uh, change it into this. Are we allowed to change? Yes, we have. Yes, we are allowed to because we have these are the domain points that we have, these are the nodes and we have to come up with the best triangulation. Now, how do we objectively say that 
uh, uh, STR and uh, uh, QTS triangulation is better than QRS and QT uh, R triangulation. We would like to see whether uh, uh, we can uh, mathematically show uh, that this triangulation is better. So, we would like to put uh, a, a circumscribing circle through points R, T and uh, uh, Q here and that circle may be something like this. So, a circle which is unique for the given three points Q, T, R and the idea is that if the point S which is forming the uh, other node of this quadrilateral, if this falls within this uh, within this circumscribing uh, circle, then <coughs> it is necessary to swap from uh, uh, this triangulation to this triangulation here. So, considering uh, this uh, circumscribing circle uh, going through uh, R, T and Q, we can say that this triangulation is better than this triangulation. So, we remove this and then we uh, keep this triangulation here. So, as a result of this, uh, this criterion here, we have decided that uh, when we consider this particular quadrilateral, this triangulation is slightly better than the other triangulation. And <coughs> so, having done this, <laughs> we can do the same thing for uh, any other quadrilateral. For example, now we have we can look at uh, P S T uh, U. This particular thing, this again be can again be done into either this way, this triangle and this triangle, or this triangle and this triangle. Which of these is better? We can try to use the same argument of uh, uh, circumscribing quadrilateral, which uh, again sub circumscribing circle, I am making a guess here that it will be something like this and that this particular node here falls inside this. Therefore, uh, a triangulation like this is better than the existing triangulation. So, we remove this and then we remove this. So, we have a triangulation which goes like this and like this. Now, we have created a triangulation uh, like this at the end of this step, but now we can see whether when we consider these four points is this the best or not. So, we have uh, uh, R T S U let us say V here then we can go through the same argument, we can draw a circumscribing circle through this these three points and we can see that point S lies outside the circumscribing circle. So, that means that the existing pattern is better than having it like this. So, when you consider uh, uh, T V R S can be made into either T V R or uh, and uh, uh, plus R S T or into S V R plus uh, S T V. So, in order to verify which of this is possible, uh, which of this is better then we can do this uh, uh, circumscribing through these things and see whether the other node uh, falls uh, outside this and if it is outside then we do not have to make this uh, change, if it is inside this then we have to make the change here. So, from this point of view we retain this triangulation and we can do the we have already done for this triangle and we can do the same thing for this this quadrilateral. So, uh, okay, that is what we have actually done here. So, in that sense with a with an existing position of 5 triangles, 
we introduce a new node S here and then we create new triangles by first of all finding out to which triangle it, uh, it belongs and then uh, once we find that out we create three new triangles by joining uh, this node here to the three vertices of the triangle and then <coughs> since we have made smaller triangles we remove the original triangle PQR from that. So, we have seven triangles and we see at this stage whether or not for the given existing nodes and for the existing uh, domain as we have seen here whether or not this is the best way of triangulation without changing the uh, location x i y j of uh, these, these points here. So, and that process will result at the end of every step in the best triangulation that is possible for the given uh, geometry and uh, we have forgotten we have a quadrilateral which is now uh, created like this because of this this is affected and we have to consider this triangle this rectangle also P S Q U let us say W here. So, for this quadrilateral is this triangulation better or is this triangulation better that we can uh, look uh, do by making a, a, a circumscribing uh, a triangle uh, circle through this and see whether this point lies outside that and one can readily see that it will be lying outside this. So, that means that this particular uh, 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 triangulation is better. So, in that way <coughs> at the end of the introduction of a, a new node we have to consider for uh, we have to consider whether the triangulation is the best for all the quadrilaterals that, that are possible. So, in, in this process when we started out we had this triangle and we created three triangles out of this and we can if you were to consider this then we had we have four possible quadrilaterals that we have to check 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 ok. This is another one and if we had <coughs> some other uh, 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 point here then we would also have to consider uh, this. So, we considered this quadrilateral and then we came up with uh, this as the best thing. Now, we have we now consider these two adjacent quadrilaterals uh, corresponding to the new diagonal here and then we see which of these is uh, uh, better and then we, we do it like this. So, in that sense if there is a change and if there is change in the uh, uh, in the quadrilaterals in the triangles which form <coughs> which make up a quadrilateral we want to see that for every possible quadrilateral that exists in its current uh, uh, way of joining ok. So, for example, we, are, we can consider this quadrilateral is this the best way or is this uh, is this better. We can consider uh, this quadrilateral and then we can do we can see whether it is better or this better. We cannot consider a quadrilateral which is like this because that is not actually joined in the form of uh, uh, two triangles. So, the quadrilateral obtained by two adjacent triangles must be uh, triangulated optimally ok must be triangulated in the better way better of the two possibilities where we have better aspect ratio is this better or for the same points is this better. So, for every quadrilateral we have to look at the two possible ways of uh, doing this and once we exhaust all the possibilities for existing adjacent tri uh, uh, triangles then we come to the conclusion that for these set of nodes p q r s t u v w this is the best triangulation possible. So, now we have seven triangles 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 which are optimally triangulated and then we introduce one more node ok and that one more node will have another x i y j and it may fall into something here. Now, we do the same process we identify which triangle it falls into by going through this uh, uh, counterclockwise direction and seeing whether uh, there is any triangle uh, 
uh, <coughs> uh, which to which this particular point always uh, 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 lies on the left side. Uh, and because we are starting with uh, a circumscribing uh, triangle which, which uh, uh, contains all possible points, there is at any point of time the, uh, the new node must fall into one of these existing triangles. Here. So, we find that out and then we make the triangles like this. This is provisional subject to the verification that with this existing thing that uh, the adjacent tri uh, uh, triangles forming a quadrilateral are optimally uh, uh, triangulated. So, we again go through the process for example, of examining uh, this is the uh, these are the three new triangles. So, we take each uh, uh, face of this and for example, this face which is uh, uh, which belongs to the triangle in which the new node has uh, happened. We see whether for this one this triangulation is better or this triangulation is better. So, obviously, for this this is better. So, we eliminate this and then we retain this and this is again another uh, uh, new quadrilateral and we see whether this is better or this is better this looks like it is better and then this is the uh, uh, other edge is this better or is this better it looks like the other may be better. So, we have this <coughs> and then uh, uh, we can see if uh, these are already old triangles we have already verified these. So, we do not have to worry about these things, but any new quadrilaterals that are found for example, now we have a quadrilateral like this this point this point this point this point. So, is this better or is this better this looks like this is better. So, we can uh, live with this and this triangle we have just now uh, this quadrilateral we have just now verified that uh, uh, this is better than uh, this one. So, we have now introduced one more point. So, we have plus 3 minus 1. So, that is 9 triangles are there and we have uh, nodes. So, in this way we introduce each node and then we form 3 new triangles and eliminate the older triangle into which uh, this falls because that would uh, mean overlapping uh, this and uh, uh, create in a sense two new uh, triangles and then we we go to the quadrilateral argument that is for the given set of possible quadrilaterals obtained by <coughs> merging two adjacent triangles we want to see for each such quadrilateral do we have the best possible uh, triangulation and that triangulation depends on the aspect ratio and the verification of this is can be done by doing this uh, uh, thing, but we can also have a simple formula for uh, for checking the verification the triangulation. For example, if you have uh, uh, 4 points let me first uh, uh, let me first draw a circle so a b c and we can consider two cases for example d which is here and we are looking at this being the triangulation and another point E here and this being the proposed triangulation. So, let me just put the different colors so that we can understand this better we have drawn a, a circle and this is the circle which is circumscribing the points a b c and 
we have a node D here. This is obviously falling inside this uh, uh, circle. So that means that the existing uh, triangle okay, over which we have made this circumscribing thing is not good and we should swap it into this. Now, we take, uh, uh, if we take points, the quadrilateral A, B, C, E, then we are proposing that it should be made into A, B, C, E to be made into A, B, C, that is this triangle plus A, C, E, that is this triangle here. So, and if this is what is proposed, then over this ABC, we draw the circumscribing circle and we see that point E lights outside this circumscribing circle. So, this is better, okay. but if we consider quadrilateral ABCD and we propose to divide this into ABC plus ACD then this is the existing proposal and we draw the circumscribing circle uh, going around it and we see that the point D is lying inside this and therefore, we say that this is not good and that we should make it into uh, uh, A B D plus D B C. And to prove this, we have to draw a circumscribing circle which is going through this uh, uh, ABD and see that point C is lying uh, beyond that and one can maybe see this by drawing a, a circle like this. So, this is what we are trying to do here and to put it in a more quantitative way, if we consider this quadrilateral here. with the proposed triangulation like this, which we know is obviously wrong here. Okay. And if you call this as alpha angle and this as beta angle, then we would like uh, alpha plus beta to be less than pi, less than 180 degrees. See right now for these two uh, uh, opposite angles to the common uh, uh, line here, okay, to the common diagonal of this quadrilateral that we are, we are proposing. So, this is greater than uh, uh, 180 degrees and that is why this is uh, uh, not good. So, we would like that this be the common, uh, this be the diagonal and this be the triangulation. So, that this uh, say gamma plus delta here. So, we can see that if you say that this is gamma and this is delta, you have gamma plus delta in the existing formulation, this is greater than 180 and this is less than 180. And so, this is preferable and this is not preferable. So, if we have an alpha plus beta which is greater than 180, then we should uh, uh, do the uh, swapping of the diagonal from A C into B D. So, this same thing can be put in the form that our sign of alpha plus beta should be, uh, if it is greater than, if it is less than 0 then this is, uh, then you have to swap. Okay. And uh, we can come up with the criterion. That uh, uh, writing sine of alpha plus beta 
as sin alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sin beta should be less than 0 to swap and these angles can be expressed in terms of the coordinate uh, points of the four corners. So, it can be written as x a c times x b c plus y a c times y b c. Let me just check. better to put it like this x c a times x b a x b d y c d minus x C D Y B D should be less than Y C A X B A minus X C A Y B A times X B D minus X X C D Y uh, C D times Y B D. Okay. The point essentially that we can do it probably in different ways, but this condition for the swapping that alpha plus beta if it is greater than 180 then it is not desirable and that we should go for swapping can be expressed in this way and this can be converted into uh, uh, an algebraic criterion like this, where x c a is defined as uh, x m n is defined as x n minus x m. So, the condition of swapping need not be done through drawing the circumscribing circle and all that, it can be programmed very easily. Once we know the x i y j of the four quadrilaterals that are uh, uh, considered and one can use a formula like this, where x m n x c a is x a minus x c, x b a is x b minus x a and uh, for example, y c d is y d minus y c like that. So, what we need to know in order to uh, uh, verify this condition is the x i y j of all the nodes a b c d. If we have this, then we have an algebraic condition for verifying this. So, we have to the mathematics involved in this is rather uh, uh, straightforward because we are only using algebraic conditions, but we have to do uh, uh, a smart programming in order to keep track of the number of existing diagonals, uh, triangles and then the existing triangulation and then uh, adding and then deleting. There is a lot of bookkeeping to be done and then a uh, uh, lot of searching to be done 
but all of this searching and all that thing involves only simple algebraic uh, uh, expressions involving only the nodal points, only the coordinates of the nodal points. So, that is the important thing here that if we know the x i y j of all the nodes, then we can come up with a clever program to uh, a smart program to implement this and then we go through like this until all the nodes that are to be joined are uh, are considered. Okay. So, if you have 100 nodes, we put all these 100 nodes in some uh, array here and then we consider the super triangle and then we put each node into this, we take out of that uh, array here and then we put this into this and then we have a separate array of triangles that are uh, created at each step and then we have uh, the triangle information to be stored in some uh, uh, some uh, 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 ordered way and then as and when these triangles are modified, the, uh, the triangles that are uh, uh, under consideration have to be uh, also modified. So, at each step, before each step we have uh, m number of triangles at the end of this step, at the end of insertion of one of these nodes, we have m plus 2 triangles, which are already optimally connected. <coughs> so, this, this uh, calls for some uh, facility with uh, programming, but it is uh, possible to do that and then if we do that, then we can uh, uh, make the strangulation work. At the end, we go on with this insertion of more and more points and then creating more of tri triangles and then going through this verification process until all the 100 nodes that we want to nodalize are, uh, are uh, taken out. So, that is that array which contains the existing number of nodes yet to be connected becomes uh, uh, empty. So, at that point, we will have all the nodes are joined with other things and then we may also have this remaining uh, uh, the three nodes of the uh, super triangle. Some of them may get eliminated. If they do not get eliminated, then we have to take out these nodes and then we have to take out from the set of triangles, those triangles which have this uh, uh, these uh, uh, super nodes corresponding to the super triangle. So, at the end of that, for a given domain, we will have come up with uh, uh, triangulation which is optimal when whenever you consider two adjacent uh, 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 quadrilaterals having a, a common faces. So, if you were to make a quadrilateral uh, by joining these two, then the uh, corresponding triangulation that we have is already optimal in the sense it has uh, chosen the correct way of ordering this and that is the advantage of this particular algorithm for uh, triangulation and this incorporates this uh, uh, idea of uh, this and this works well for convex surfaces because in the convex surfaces we can uh, uh, guarantee that uh, the triangulation this particular uh, the optimal triangulation is actually done, but if you have uh, a concave surface then this particular algorithm may run into difficulties. We may get a, a concave surface for example, if you have a corner in such a case we may have boundary nodes like this and the algorithm which also has some super nodes and uh, uh, all those things may join may form in the process of generating these nodes. For example, at this stage there is no information of the boundary coming in this and it may form a triangle like this and this obviously is outside the domain and this, uh, uh, this triangle should not have been formed, but at, at some interior st uh, stage of the process of triangulation we do not if we do not have the information that this, this triangulation is prohibited then it is not possible to uh, avoid this, this kind of thing. So, this is possible for a concave surface, but if you have a convex surface like this, then 
this criterion will always make sure that uh, uh, this kind of possibility does not happen that it, uh, it would choose a triangulation like this rather than a triangulation which is falling outside because that is not optimal. Uh, so, that, that condition that uh, uh, the optimality verification here will make sure that uh, a triangulation involving uh, uh, nodes which may make this fall outside like this will not uh, uh, arise in the process of uh, uh, triangulation. So, and uh, there is no way of avoiding this if you follow this algorithm only at the end we have to see whether we uh, at the boundary points what kind of uh, uh, triangles are generated and if there are any triangle, uh, triangles which fall outside the domain then we have to remove them. So, the, that is one of the disadvantages of uh, the Delaunay triangulation and also the advantage of uh, Delaunay triangulation that it is very good at doing uh, convex domains, but in concave domains like in corners and uh, those kind of places we have to be careful that the triangles which are uh, uh, which fall outside that computational domain are not uh, made and if they are made we have to take them out. So, this is how we can do uh, uh, triangulation either using the Delaunay triangulation method or the advancing front method. In the case of advancing front method this situation does not arise because we are always defining a boundary and uh, uh, we are always looking to uh, make sure that uh, for example, something like this will be going in this direction. So, uh, we are always conscious of the uh, uh, advancing front and which makes uh, this kind of uh, solution uh, untenable, it would not arise in the case of advancing front method. Now, before uh, we complete the discussion on the grid generation, uh, we should see some idea of how difficult it is. We can immediately see that when we talk about an unstructured mesh, it is very, uh, it has to be a smart program, it has to be a clever program and in terms of mathematics, uh, uh, it is not such a demanding thing. In terms of computational effort, it is not so demanding in pure number crunching uh, kind of thing, but there is a, a lot of logic that is uh, required for this. And the generation of the grid itself is not expected to take uh, uh, too much time, but one can see that there are large number of possibilities as the number of nodes increases, the computational time required for verification of all these things increases and it is generally thought that the unstructured mesh generation like this involves a, a, a computational time which increases with number of nodes to the power 1.1 or 1.2. Okay. Let us say that 1.1 .1, uh, uh, type of uh, increase of the uh, grid generation time uh, with the number of nodes. So, that means that as the number of nodes increases, then it does not increase linearly because there are more possibilities, but as we have seen in this process you do not have so many new rectangles, new quadrilaters that you have to verify. So, it is not like n square or n cube, it is only n to the power 1.1 or so. In the case of structured just, uh, mesh generation, uh, for example, using the uh, elliptic generation method that we have uh, considered, we have to solve partial differential equation and uh, uh, we have seen a number of methods and typically there it is of the order of n square if you if you have an iterative method for the solution of this and it may be n square or uh, uh, more because you have to uh, do it a number of times it may be some k times n square where k may be some 10 or 20 uh, depending on the number of uh, iterations that you have to make to get the matrix. Uh, which are required as part of the solution process, which are produced as part of the solution process. Although this is the type of computational effort that is required, it pales in comparison with the computational time required for the overall solution of the, uh, of the equations, because in those kind of equations we are solving a, a, a similar type of uh, uh, a phi equal to b type of uh, equations but we are solving them 
many many times because we have an iterative process and then we have to do that and the computational time which is required for the grid generation also pales in comparison with the time it is required to convert uh, for example, uh, an engineering drawing into <coughs> the specification of the boundary and uh, uh, all those kind of things. There is usually a lot of times that is spent in identifying uh, precisely what is the computational domain and how that computational domain uh, is uh, 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 can be specified in, in some uh, uh, mathematical form such that you can uh, uh, generate the overall shape of the uh, domain okay, so that you have this is part of a triangle, this part of a, 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 a cube, this is part of a sphere. So, all those things will have to be added together. So, you have to make use of uh, several building blocks to come up with the definition of the surface topology of uh, the computational domain and at that point if you especially if you have lot of internals then uh, the generation of the surface topology of the internals itself will take long time and uh, and that is usually much more time consuming than the raw computational time that is required for the grid generation after you have defined the uh, uh, surface topology of the computational domain. So, from a practical point of view grid generation is very very important it is an essential part of uh, the uh, computational process. There are methods that are available uh, uh, for generation of a mesh for uh, uh, any domain of arbitrary complexity, but it is not a trivial task whether it is using the structured generation method, body fitted uh, uh, method or in the unstructured method there is quite a bit of programming that uh, needs to be done and uh, uh, we have to take care of so many things, so that we do not uh, 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 we do not get into problems with uh, uh, overlapping meshes, extra volumes and holes in the computational domain all those kind of things are uh, avoided. And then the quality of the grid in terms of the aspect ratio of the cells is again a uh, further point orthogonality at, uh, at uh, the boundaries is another point which is a desirable feature. So, there is a lot of aspects to grid generation one has to study quite a bit more before one can uh, uh, become uh, very good at grid generation. So, what we have tried to do is to touch upon the important elements concepts uh, involved in this and for fairly simple geometries the whatever that we have discussed here is uh, possibly sufficient for us to venture into uh, uh, the programming. So, using what we discussed we can easily generate a grid uh, for example, uh, a domain like this with some uh, internal packing or if you have a corrugated flow domain like this with uh, uh, one fluid going in this direction another fluid going in this direction it is again possible to generate uh, 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 a grid like this for uh, using these kind of approaches, but grid generation is not a trivial task and it has to be done uh, professionally and even if you have a, a, a very good grid generator the generation <coughs> of a grid starting with an engineering drawing is not a trivial task. So, one has to uh, allow for sufficient time in order and comprehension of the details of the geometry of the flow domain uh, to end uh, understand how it can be uh, converted into an expression uh, which is usable by a grid generator. So, that kind of time is also not to be underestimated. So, having uh, uh, considered all these things one can say that grid generation is now uh, a routine task for a trained specialist it is not to be done for uh, uh, one has to train oneself into uh, various aspects of uh, the generation strategy and then uh, the correction strategy mesh refinement and uh, mesh amelioration <coughs> all those things have to be done before one can come up with an optimal geometry. So, in the uh, last lecture of this course we will uh, uh, try to see try to address some of the computational aspects 
of a, a solution on an unstructured or a body fitted mesh.